that was easy. All right, so what I want to talk about today are some of the really simple conversions that are commonly done in the theory class. So normally we do these complicated conversions. Here is basically a miscellaneous video for some of the really easy conversions. So in the theory class, when we talk about regular languages, so we have regular languages here. So we have uh, the DFAs. So uh, those live in one world. We have NFAs here, so non-deterministic finite automata, and we have regexes, and we also have regular grammars. Okay, this is actually going to get a kind of complicated picture. So with all of these, we can actually convert from one to the other one. So uh, NFA to DFA, that is the power set construction. And I have numerous videos on that. Um, the NFA to regex conversion, that is the GNFA method. So that is GNFA. And actually, DFA to NFA is exactly the same process for reasons that we're actually going to get to. Uh, going from a DFA into... Uh, so we did go into regexes. We can go from a regex to a uh, to an NFA. This is Thompson's construction, but this is uh, I usually don't reference the name, but I'm just going to say that it's easy because the regex is defined in a recursive way. So then, if we look at the regex from a tree perspective, like it's the union of things and those are concatenations of things or something, then we can build an NFA for each one of those pieces and then just glue all the pieces together. So it, it's basically just a, a, a application of recursion there. So, so that's easy. Um, but I wanna explore some of these other ones. Um, well, the regex to DFA, that's not really that easy. So I'm gonna put a, a dashed line here because it's hard to go uh, directly. It, it turns out that you can. So you can use uh, derivatives uh, of regexes. And this is actually quite hard. I've done it on the channel. So if you search regex derivatives, you'll find this. Uh, I want to explore uh, this direction in blue, uh, DFA to NFA. So you may think, okay, every DFA is an NFA, so therefore we're done. This should be really easy. But it turns out that it's not so easy. Um, because it turns out that we have to make a slight change in the formal representation of the thing. So if you think of like how a DFA works, so a DFA is this five tuple, so states, uh, input alphabet, transitions, start state, final state. If we look at the transition function of a DFA, it takes a state and an input character and it outputs a single state. So note that it's a single state here. Whereas in the NFA world, it's all, again, a five tuple. Uh, so I'll, I'll call this the transition function for DFAs. So DFA here. Um, if we have the transition function for NFAs, again, we take a, a state here. It's actually not so important that we take a character or the empty uh, or epsilon on the transition. That's not so important. The important thing is that the transition function here outputs a set of states because remember this is called the power set construction um, when we convert from NFA to DFA. So the problem here is that this outputs a single state whereas this thing outputs a set of states. And the fact that we have a single state in one case and a set of states in the other case, those are fundamentally in incompatible with each other. So the way that we get around this in the DFA to NFA conversion, quote unquote, is that we define when we, whenever we have delta of Q, actually, I'm going to rewrite it. So that it's pretty clear that it means DFA. So the transition function for DFAs takes a state and a character and it outputs some other state. So then what we do in the NFA is we say delta of the NFA of the same state and we can just avoid, uh, we can, we're, because we're just doing a conversion of the DFA to the NFA, we're not introducing any transitions. So again, I'm gonna have A here. 
but I'm gonna introduce that it's a singleton set uh, here. So I need to output a set of states and there's only one state that the DFA can go to. So I need to output a set of states and so I need a singleton center. So uh, this, this is easy. We did both of these um, and we did NFA to uh, regular grammar. And so th this is actually easy. And actually the reverse direction is too. So this one's also easy. All right, so, and it turns out the DFA to regular grammars um, is really easy too, but the reverse direction is not so easy. Um, because if you have an arbitrary regular grammar, how do you deal with uh, variables going to other variables? It turns out that you can, but it's kind of like embedding the NFA to DFA conversion right inside there. So it's not super trivial to do. Here we're talking about trivial conversions. Okay, so uh, the only trivial conversion here was from DFA to NFA. But there are some other things that we can do when we get into context-free languages. So I actually just got a question about this on a Discord server, not mine, but a different one, where we talk about the context-free languages. And so we, the two main objects there are the CFGs, the context for grammars, and the pushdown automata. Okay, and the conversions between both of these are not so straightforward. And I don't think they have names, but uh, those are the things that you cover in class. It's not so straightforward. Um, but it turns out that the conversion from a regular grammar into a CFG is really easy. Because from a regular grammar's perspective, so what is a regular grammar? So the four types of rules that you're allowed to have, oh, it doesn't have to be the start variable. The types of variables that you're allowed to have uh, are A goes to epsilon. Uh, I meant to say rules there. So we can go to have a variable make epsilon, a single character, go to another variable directly, or produce one character and go to another variable uh, after that. And in a context-free grammar, you, uh, you can do whatever you want on the right-hand side. So a regular grammar, uh, you're forced to have a certain thing on the right-hand side, whereas the context-free grammar, you can have anything on the right-hand side. So the conversion, quote-unquote, so going from a regular grammar into the context-free grammar is literally do nothing. That's pretty easy because the structure of a regular grammar is a four tuple, just like a context-free grammar. It's a set of variables, set of terminals, rules, start variable, and that's what a context-free grammar is too. It's a set, 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 set. Um, someone could probably make a song out of that. <laughs> so a regular grammar is just saying um, the things that can go in the R set here are specific, whereas the CFG says you can have anything you want. So if we wanted to convert this, we wouldn't have to do anything because it already obeys the rules of the CFG. Whereas when we did DFA and NFA, the actual transition function outputted something uh, completely different. And uh, what about, okay, so that's, that's an easy conversion. Obviously you can't convert back because there are some languages that you can make a CFG for, but you can't make any uh, regular thing for. But, we can actually do something similar with um, DFA going to NFA, and, uh, sorry, to PDA, and actually NFA to PDA at the same time. So these are also easy. So I'm gonna demonstrate this for, for NFAs um, um, be, because it generalizes the notion of a DFA. Uh, because if we have uh, NFA doing a problem, we can just convert the DFA into the NFA by this, and then convert it over to the DFA. All right, so then here, let's see. So if we have a DFA, we must have trans, let's look at what the, the structure of a DFA is. So it's these five pieces again. And depending on your definitions or your book's definition of PDA, I'm just gonna use SIPSERS here. So states, input alphabet, stack alphabet, transitions, uh, start state, uh, set of final states. Uh, for a PDA. So, sometimes you have more, sometimes you have less, it, it depends. All right, well, the, step, the states don't really have to change. The input alphabet doesn't have to change. Um, the stack alphabet 
if we're converting from a DFA into a PDA, well, a DFA is kind of just like a PDA that ignores its stack. It doesn't do anything. So effectively, what we can do, if we wanted to define the PDA formally, is that we just set the, the stack alphabet to be uh, the empty set. Well, we, we don't have to have anything in there because we're not going to do anything on a transition. If you must have some character in the stack alphabet, you can, but we're not going to use it at all. So uh, what do you do about the transitions? So let, let's think about how the transitions work. So in the DFA, the, the transition function uh, takes a state and an input character outputs a state. And depending on your definition of PDA, so this is the one for PDA, if I can spell that would be good too. So that takes a state uh, and an input character or not, and a stack character or not. And it outputs um, a set of, um, of pairs, essentially. So uh, here we have a state along with something to pop or not. Uh, uh, sorry, to push. So the thing that goes first is pop, for uh, second thing is push, and there's reasons for that. All right, so then how do you actually convert the uh, transition in the DFA world into the transition for the PDA world? Well, we actually don't have to do a whole lot. So uh, let's, let's visualize what that looks like. So let's say we have a transition in the DFA, which is looking like this. So uh, some state on some transition A goes to a state R. Then what we can do in the PDA world is we can say, okay, going from state Q to state R, I'm going to read that particular character and I am not going to pop anything, and I'm not going to push anything. Okay, so and the notation depends on the textbook here, but um, essentially we're just making a, a conversion, quote unquote, from a DFA into a PDA because a DFA is just a PDA that ignores the stack. So the formal definition here. So if we have in the DFA world, uh, Q on input A goes to state R. Then we have the transition function for the PDA uh, from state Q, reading an A and no pop is going to result in a singleton set. So remember that the PDA transition function outputs a set and, and actually is a pair of things. So it's a state along with something to push or not. Well, here we're not going to push anything. So it's going to result in the pair R empty. And actually, we still kind of need to define the, the PDA for, for everything else. And actually, for the NFA, we needed to do that too, but um, this will generalize it. So we need to say that the PDA, for, any other, for anything that is being popped here, is going to result in an empty. So if we have Q, um, uh, let's see, so, okay, so I'll do it this way. So, QBX is going to be empty, and what we should clarify here is that B is in, it could be a character or empty, so it doesn't matter whether this is a read or not, but X has to be uh, in the stack alphabet, okay? Um, but the thing is that we can actually omit this because we define the stack alphabet to be empty, so therefore we, we can actually not bother doing this. And actually, I should have mentioned in the NFA world uh, for the transition function, uh, any transition from any state that is an epsilon transition goes nowhere. So if we have a uh, state here on input uh, epsilon, oh, sorry, uh, with an epsilon transition, it's the empty set for all states Q. So for any state that we want, the, there's no epsilon transition coming out of it. Okay, so uh, there's more that you can do here. So you can talk about like deterministic PDAs and the, the conversions are very, very similar to this. Um, you can talk about similar models for Turing machines. So there's a notion of an unrestricted grammar 
or a context sensitive grammar, depending on which model you want to look at, which is an easy conversion from a CFG because you, you literally just do nothing. The PDA transitions into a Turing machine are not completely straightforward, but here are the easy quote unquote conversions that are not actually taught that often, but are nonetheless important because we need to describe these objects formally. And uh, if we don't understand how these objects actually work in a formal sense, then we are toast. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about all of these conversions, uh, if they were easy or not, into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.